In this tutorial, we're going to look at Forest Set, a brand new helper plugin used to create a multi-purpose container for scene objects. A Forest Set object can be added to a forest object as a collection of geometry, surfaces, references, or areas. Multiple forest objects can share a forest set, making it simple to add or remove areas, geometry, or surfaces, and update several scatters from one easy-to-edit location. In this tutorial, we'll use the Forest Pack 8 promo scene to take a look at how it works, and we'll start by looking at how to use forest sets for areas. To simplify things, I'll demonstrate using just two Forest Pack objects. This is a somewhat limited example of what you would probably expect to do in production, but I just want to keep it nice and simple to make sure the basic principles are clear. So the idea is that you've got two Forest Pack objects. One adds trees, and the other adds buildings. I want to use the same areas for both to create villages on the ledges of these mountains. In older versions of Forest Pack, that would mean adding the same set of areas to both Forest Pack objects. But in Forest Pack 8 and above, I can now use a single forest set instead and manage both Forest Pack objects from a single location. To add a forest set, go to the I2 section of the Create panel, click the button and drag out a forest set icon in the scene. The interface is very simple to understand, it's basically a list to which you can add scene objects. To start with, I'll add a single spline area to the list by clicking on the plus symbol and picking it. The forest set now contains a single area. Now, we just want to add the forest set to the areas rollout of both forest pack objects. This set contains splines, so we'll add it as a spline area, but you could use it for objects too. You'll see that items appear inside the spline, just as though you'd used a normal area. Both forest pack objects are now driven by this single set. That means I can easily add or subtract areas anytime and they will both update. Even with just two, forest objects can easily halve the number of clicks. But imagine if this is five forest pack objects that link together, in which case you've saved a lot more effort and made the scene much easier to manage in the bargain. You're not limited to using forest sets for areas though. It works for the scatter source items too whether that's geometry, lights, or something else. In this demo scene, I've got a lot of castle buildings which I've categorized into three sizes. I could add all of them to one forest set, but if I divide them into three, it makes it much easier to adjust the probability of the three types. It'll also make it easier if I want to add or subtract buildings within each category further down the line. The procedure for creating a set is exactly the same. Just draw one in the scene and go to the modify panel. To add multiple objects, click the Add Multiple button, and then select them from the item picker list. In this case, I'll just add the small castle objects, and that's pretty much it. To save time, I've already created the other two sizes. One little detail worth mentioning here is that you can make it easy to identify a forest set in the viewport by giving the logo a specific color. To do that, you activate the Use Wireframe Color option. You can now change the color just by clicking on the color swatch up here. You can use forest sets as scatter items in the regular way, adding them to the items list. All the items in a set will inherit the settings below. So for example, I can lower the probability of all of the large and the medium castles quite easily with just a couple of clicks. As you can see, it's a new way of working with Forest Pack. And remember, these forest sets could be used in multiple Forest Pack objects, so you could easily be adjusting the scatters for loads of objects from a few easy to update locations. Finally, I'm going to demonstrate one more really powerful feature of forest sets, which is its ability to automatically load items from a layer. This has many uses, but it can be particularly powerful when using imported CAD files that contain references and areas. To use it, you create a new forest set and enable From Layers. In the Layers list, enter the name of the layer you wish to use as a source. If you want to use multiple layers, just enter them as a comma-separated list. Next, you can use this forest set in any part of Forest Pack that accepts an input, such as areas, items, surfaces, paths, or in this demo, as references. So I changed the distribution mode to References, which lets you scatter an item onto the pivot of an object in the scene. I'll then pick the forest set from the scene, and you can see that it's added a catapult to the two dummy objects in the reference layer. As I add additional dummy objects to the list, Forest Pack is updated and automatically adds another catapult. It's a really handy way of using Max's native scene organization tools to drive all your scatters. Before I leave, there's one little caveat I want to mention with this last feature. At the moment, if you make a change to the objects in this layer, you might need to do a manual rebuild to force Forest Pack to register the update. So to make that easier, we've also added a new button to Forest Lister at the top here. Just select the forest items you want to rebuild, 
or simply click here to select them all and then click the button. And that brings me to the end of the tutorial. That's just a couple of examples to help you get a sense of how forest sets work. I hope you can see how they can be used to dramatically simplify the creation and editing of complex scenes, as well as making it easier to create entire ecosystems, especially when used with linked areas, another Forest Pack 8 feature that we'll demo in our next video. Mm -hmm.